So this is Duncan Michael, um, who's a really great fiddle player in the New York City scene and in a lot of other places. And um, yeah, so how old were you when you started playing violin? Uh, four years old. What kind of music did you start out with? Uh, I started out with Suzuki and uh, pretty early on got into fiddle music. Um, I had uh, two of my mother's sisters play fiddle, one of them. Uh, was more was a Suzuki teacher actually, and she also played some bluegrass stuff. So I got into the sounds of bluegrass that way. And then my other aunt was a Irish fiddle player, and she she ended up being a big mentor to me. So what drew you to New York City for bluegrass or for music? Uh, I mean, I just really love the diversity here, uh, musically, culturally, every in every way. It's just so diverse. Um, so I guess that was my initial draw to it, and you know, you can sort of have the finest of everything here, so, um, you know, it's kind of the, the world in, a, in one city. So it's nice, uh, it's always refreshing to have influences from other, like, to see what's going on in, like, the, like, the Cuban music scene, or, like, you know, the Venezuelan music scene, or, or whatever, you know, to have all this amazing stuff going on. In, yeah. Um, so how long have you been living in New York? Um, I would say it's probably been about seven or eight years now. How have you seen, like, the scene evolve, like, in bluegrass since you've been here? Um, I, I feel like it ebbs and flows a lot. Like, when I first moved here, there was a lot of, uh, sort of colleagues of mine from, who were also students at Berkeley, mm -hmm. where I went to school in Boston. There was kind of a wave of, of us that moved down here at the same time. So that was like a really exciting time for, for like my, my age of people playing bluegrass. And then a lot of those people have since moved to Nashville. So it's kind of, it kind of peaks and, you know, peaks and valleys, I guess. Did you, um, what drew you to like playing folk music and bluegrass when you were younger? Um, well, for me, it was kind of a, a little bit of an escape from the the pressure of classical violin because yeah. I did that a lot, and uh, it just seemed like it, it was really important for me to have folk music to uh, keep the you know sort of an, an alternative to this sort of competitive, high pressure uh, atmosphere of classical music, and, and to have some uh, a, more of a family sort of atmosphere with the music scene, you know. Yeah. You're, you're a part of this, but why do you think there are so many younger people playing? Like, because usually, I guess, people who usually play are typically older, like huh. 50s, 60s now, so there are a lot of like 20 and 30 year olds playing. Why do you think that there are so many younger people playing? That's an interesting question. I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I just, I, I grew up totally homeschooled. I didn't go to school till college, so I always yeah. feel like I'm the last, least qualified person to know anything about my generation or mm -hmm. anything like that. But I, like, I just did it because that's all I, I really knew how to do to, to make a living and to express myself and have friends. That's kind of always what I've done. Mm -hmm. um, but it is interesting, and I do wonder about I wonder how, um, I, I feel like it's, you know, like I was just saying about the family atmosphere, um, I think it's a great way for, for kids to have some, it's a great way for kids to connect with each other, not on, not on the internet, mm -hmm. and to, and to have some real meaningful, uh, foundation for relationships, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the cool thing about blue, blue, like folk music, I guess, and bluegrass is that it's not really about performance, so, mm -hmm. yeah, the jamming aspect is really cool and communal. Yeah. It's my favorite part. Um, did you start off playing the violin, or was there another instrument that you started on? Yeah, I've always primarily been a fiddle player, yeah, violin. And you also play the cello. Yeah. When did you start playing the cello? Uh, towards the end of college, I got into it. My roommate was Tristan Claridge, who's a great cellist. 
yeah. he encouraged me to start, him and his sister Tashina sort of encouraged me to start playing cello, so I got really into it. For a while, it sort of like overtake, overtook my passion for the fiddle. Yeah. Um, I'm really sorry about this next question, but if you could describe the music or the scene in like one word or phrase. I think, I think, I would say open, pretty open-minded mm -hmm. uh, compared to a lot of other regional bluegrass scenes. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think it's a little bit more uh, uh, tolerant of, of other influences in, yeah. New, in New York, you know, than in Nashville, for example. Mm-hmm. I like that. Um, So you created this thing called the Wickle Buckle. How did what? How did that come about? Uh, it came about because I was playing with a band. We were called the Boston Boys, and then we became the Rondo Riggs. And it was essentially a rock band with fiddle in it and mandolin. Uh, and so it was pretty. It was pretty much like I was singing a lot and also like kind of like moving around a lot. And I just found it to be really restrictive to be, uh, you know, having my, my head be, have to be completely stationary. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I designed this strap where I could essentially like move my head around and sing without having any tension in my neck. So that, that was kind of the, the, the necessity for the invention, I think. It's pretty cool. Is there like another instrument that you've always wanted to play? Or have you always just wanted to play the fiddle? Uh, yeah, I mean, my, my attention kind of drifts to other instruments, depending on, like, the phase that I'm going through with, like, the type of music and stuff. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm just, like, kind of into learning songs, so I tend to gravitate more toward instruments where that's, it's easier to sort of harmonize uh, or accompany singing, so, like, piano or guitar, keyboard instruments or guitar. Yeah. Um... Do you have like any standout moments playing in New York City or just in general? Like best, most fun or yeah. most significant? Yeah, either one. Uh, well, last night we got paid two hundred bucks to play White <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't. I don't know. Um, uh, well, I mean, I got to. I mean, as far as like accolades sort of things, I got to play on the Stephen Colbert show for two nights. Oh, that's cool. cool. And I would say that that was also just very, um, like a musical height, in addition to just being cool. It was like, it was really fun. The first night, uh, Parliament Funkadelic uh, was, were musical guests, so we got to like play all the hits with them, and like that's I'm a cool. huge fan of theirs, so. so that was like a real, I was like really starstruck during that. And like that was that was like the ultimate sort of like New York uh, musician experience for me. I, I would have yeah. to say. Yeah, that sounds really cool. Um, what draws you to bluegrass now, or, or when you were younger? Um, I mean, I would have to say it would it would be the community element. Not to rip off of everyone else, but uh, just because, like, I, I've always been really into a lot of different kinds of music, and I was really into jazz when I was a, like a teenager, like a young teenager. Mm -hmm. And then when I went to college, actually, college was like when I really just started playing bluegrass and old time music all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason really was that there, there just was more. I was really just drawn to the community. Um, yeah. I found that the that everyone in the jazz scene was like there. There was always this kind of like air of suspicion about everyone, uh, you know, just like a sort of like a fear of competition and, and stuff. And then like when I would go to like a bluegrass jam, and hang out with everyone, it was like a little. It was definitely like more like people from the jazz scene at Berkeley would always come to the like to the bluegrass hang because they just knew it was a better hang. So. Yeah. So there was definitely like a heightened interest during my time there in 
bluegrass, I think, from everyone at the school, or many people at the school. And that was right around the time that the Roots program started at Berkeley, so they, they kind of decided to sort of capitalize on the energy. Yeah. There was always competition, and, like, it was always really hard to, like, get gigs because everyone would just, like, nail each other. And, yeah. Yeah. There's definitely some of that in bluegrass, but... Yeah. You know, it's yeah. definitely... I, yeah, and I don't know why. It's because it's, like... There's just something more chill about it, about the music, and, and that reflects on the scene, I think. Music always... Uh, reflects on on the community in interesting ways I feel like you know like what yeah. like the instruments that are in it like one thing is that bluegrass instruments are like are considerably quieter than like saxophone and trumpet and stuff yeah. like that so I feel like that maybe has I have a theory that that has something to do with it I don't know yeah um did you like always want to become like a musician when you were older when yeah did you always want to grow up and be a musician? Uh, for the most part, yes. I used to want to work for uh, the Lego company, but it didn't work out. <laughs> that was the one other other thing I was in. I was just like really into Lego, so I thought maybe I'd be an architect or something like that. But I, I would make I would be a terrible architect. Yeah. Um, but yeah, pretty much. I've always played music and always thought I would do it and and started make you know started doing it professionally when I was pretty young so it I've really not haven't known anything else I haven't had like any other job basically I've always been able to just I'm luckily have, and I'm very grateful that I've always been able to sustain myself playing music cool um well thank you so much for talking to me yeah yeah thanks, thanks for coming over me in the project. Yeah.